Hiya, pals! Welcome to the Mouse Bites Podcast! Here we go! Hello and welcome to Mouse Bites, the show all about Disney video games, past and present. This is episode 23. I'm your host, Clay, and I'm joined by my co-host, Jeff. Hello, Jeff. Why, hello. Can you hear how low my voice goes? It's so spooky. Oh my gosh, it's so spooky. Now you're turning into a crypt keeper. Oh, <laughs> all right. Well, we, we have children listening. We better. Uh, we better. Yeah, we don't want to scare them. It's getting. It's getting really scary, even for me. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, how are you, Jeff? Oh, I am spooktacular. How about yourself? Good. Good. Happy. Uh, just slightly early uh, Halloween to you, sir. Cheers, and to you as well. Yes, and all the listeners, ha- happy Halloween. Um, yeah, it's gonna be. Uh, it's gonna be a good episode. We we purposely sat down and came up with a nice spooky game to play uh given the time of year so it's gonna be good and then uh, next month we've got a great thanksgiving game picked out uh just for the holiday jeff go ahead and tell them what our thanksgiving game is gonna be oh uh our thanksgiving game is going to be uh something i haven't looked at yet yeah no i don't even we don't we don't have that picked out i was just curious <laughs> if you'd come up with something Hmm, I'll keep working on that. Everybody's favorite Disney movie video game, Turkey something. Mm, is there a Pocahontas game? Is that wrong? There is. <laughs> uh, I've played it on the Game Boy, and it's Ooh. terrible. Oh, good. And uh, I don't, I'm don't. i not sure what she has to do with Thanksgiving. but Well, the first Thanksgiving was between the settlers and the natives, and there's a little bit of settlers and natives in that. Don't think it was the same group because that was was, was John Smith. Was John Smith, was he a pilgrim? No, so. no, I think no. he was. Yeah. Oh, pretty sure. That's I, my bad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we can make him one. Definitely. And on that note, I think we should go ahead and jump into this <laughs> week's episode, yes. guys. Today, <laughs> today we are looking at Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas: The Pumpkin King. <laughs> Awesome. So to start us off, Jeff, why don't you go ahead and tell the listeners at home if they've never played this game before, which uh, moving forward, we're just going to call it the Pumpkin King, uh, not the entire, you know, title, <laughs> all, all all the names included and everything. Jeff, why don't you tell the people what the heck this game is? All righty. <laughs> so the Pumpkin King at its core is a Metroidvania style game, which um, if you're not familiar with the term... You should be. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it's <laughs> essentially an, an adventure platformer where you upgrade your character to gain access to new areas of one giant overworld map. Um, so it was developed by Toes, mostly known for developing Nintendo's Game & Watch Gallery series, uh, some various Dragon Ball games, and some other Nintendo products, as well as, as far as we found, they ported Breath of the Wild to the Switch, which is pretty impressive. So, uh, yeah. Good pedigree with this team, it looks like. Uh, it was released in Japan in September of 2005, and then uh, just a month later in October in North America, and then a month after that, after Halloween, but before Christmas, in the European Union, uh, November 10th. So it came out on the Game Boy Advance, so it's a 2D, 16-bit looking game. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it for the production of it. I'm sure there's a few things you wanted to share, though. Yeah, um, before I do that, I I just want to point out, it's nice that they were able to get this out in that window because the great thing about Nightmare Before Christmas is you can literally watch it anywhere from like October through, you know, the end of December. It works great as a Halloween movie and a Christmas movie. So the fact that they're able to get this out, you know, starting in September all the way through to November, like they they nailed it, they got it in. So 
Uh, anyway, um, no, a couple things I wanted to mention. Um, I guess I, you could maybe say it was just additional notes, but uh, I did buy, I do have a copy of this game uh, complete in box. And so I thought it would be cool just to point out a couple things. Uh, the, the box art on the front of the box is one of those, like, I don't even know what you call it, holographic ones yeah, where you, like, like if you turn it, vertical it, slitted. Right. And it, like, makes, like, the little, like, DJ sound, like, <laughs> yep. Um, and so it has like, if you turn the box, you get, you know, Jack Skellington, but then if you turn it, he turns into the pumpkin King. And so, uh, I don't know. I thought that was really neat. Uh, I saw this in a store for like 15 bucks and I was like, I have to get that. And so, uh, and then, you know, a couple months later, we're like, Hey, we should review it. And so now I have it. Uh, the other thing that it came with, I thought was really interesting is there's an insert in the game. It's basically just a piece of paper that is folded up. Um, but when you open it up, it says, create your very own Halloween toy. What? Um, it's like a cutout thing. Basically it says, what you'll need is scissors, a glue stick, glue or tape. And basically you like cut this thing up and you fold and you insert these little things. And it basically makes, it's hard to explain, but it's basically on the outside. It's like Jack Skellington's face, but then you open it up and there's like a little Halloween town inside with like different characters <laughs> wow. and stuff. That's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. It's a little elaborate. The character models look exactly like they were pulled from Kingdom Hearts almost. Interesting. Uh, which is, it's like the character models from that, it looks like. Or, okay. I don't know, maybe it was art assets from this game. I don't know. Uh, but I thought that was kind of cool. It's really weird and uh, hard to explain. But I didn't do it. I just have it sitting here in a full thing. But I thought it was kind of cool. So yeah, I wanted, wanted to share that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, moving forward um jeff uh well, how about we talk about our uh history with this game why don't you uh go first please okay so i'm sad to say this is yet another one that i wasn't aware of until we brought it up for the show um i kind of missed the gba era in general i didn't ever own a gba my younger siblings had one uh in that time frame but i never did and i didn't really play theirs because it was around yeah, it was close to when i went off to college i mean it had been out a couple years before that but right. um I mean, I played some GBA games on a DS. Either way, I wasn't aware of this one. I didn't play it, and uh, I played it for the first time just as we prepped for this episode this month. So, Cool. Uh, how about yourself? Uh, I don't have a lot of experience with it either. Um, I, I love Nightmare Before Christmas, and so um, I'm always on the lookout for things you know pertaining to that. But for some reason, this one always kind of flew under the radar for me. I wasn't really uh, aware of it. Uh, I had a Game Boy Advance. Um, but I didn't have a ton of games for it and I don't think I like actively went shopping a lot for them. Yeah. Um, kind of similar to you where I think I was getting a little bit older and it wasn't as appealing, which is kind of what I've discovered, you know, the past year or two is there are really a lot of good games and a lot of good looking games for this console that I'm just like completely not aware of. And so it's been kind of cool looking back and seeing some of these games, but yeah. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, I came across a copy in the wild and it was like, oh, I got to pick this up. 15 bucks totally. And so, uh, yeah, even after getting it, didn't really play it until we decided to cover on the show. Uh, and then I was like, yes, I, I love Nightmare. It's like close to, you know, it's fall. I'm going to play this entire game. And then I started playing it and I realized really quickly that it's not a platformer with levels, but uh, like you said earlier, a Metroidvania and I was devastated or mm. just kind of upset because <laughs> as we'll find out as we talk through this i'm not a big fan of metroidvanias uh there's very few ones that i really like and i think it takes a lot to impress me when it comes to those kinds of games and so i was kind of bummed out about this and unfortunately didn't end up playing as much of it uh due to that reason but regardless i still think it's a cool it's a cool thing and i think they did some really neat things with it there's another uh, nightmare before christmas game for the xbox and i also own that i played a bit more of that one uh still haven't beat that one either but um i don't know i think i like that one better than this one but regardless i, I still am, i'm really excited to talk about this one and uh we'll see maybe maybe jeff can help me see the bright sides of this game but we shall see. <laughs> we shall see indeed. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. When we come back, we will jump straight in to some gameplay discussion. <laughs> All 
right, so starting off our gameplay discussion is visuals. Then we'll be followed by some audio. We'll talk about what it sounds like. And then we'll hit some gameplay difficulty. We'll talk through, you know, some levels, some stories, some bosses, all that good stuff. So, Jeff, kicking it right off visually, what are your thoughts? How does this game look? Well, I will go right off the bat and say that the visuals are the highlight of this game for myself. Um, and I think just in general, they are very kind of cartoony, cell shaded looking in the in this essence of 16 bit, um, but very fluently animated, uh, much more color usage, I think, than the movie, the source. Um, Burton movies tend to be very much kind of look like they were pen sketches and, and focus on the darker tones. And I and I get, you know, the, especially on the original Game Boy that didn't have the backlit screen, a lot of the visuals had to be bumped up. Um, so if you play it on a DS or you play it through an emulator or, or a Game Boy player or on a GameCube, however you play it, um, it's going to appear much more bright than it would have on an original Game Boy Advance. So that noted, it's still pretty vibrant considering it's it's not saying it looks like Viva Pinata or, or something like that, but it, it definitely has a little more pop to it than uh, the movie does. Um, that said, the character models look pretty good in my opinion. I think they're pretty accurate for, for the, you know, the stylistic look. Um, not to say that they're one-to-one -one exact representations of the movie, like uh, the Mad Doctor in the wheelchair. Is it? Finkelstein or something like that. Yeah, Finkelstein. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is, you know, it's a little more cartoony and caricaturized, but not straying far from the source, you know, like it's not like an alternate art style. It's more of just a limited, you know, sprite sizes are kind of hard on such a tiny screen. Um, other than that, I, I don't have a whole lot more to comment on. There's some good presentation with like giant Jack tapping the screen at certain points or um, little victory animations at the end of levels or even the, the main menu screen looks really good. Um, there's some transparency effects which look a lot better on an original screen than they do on an emulator because of how transparency works with flickering sprites on alternating refreshes and stuff like that. So um, it's you know there's a bunch of little trade-offs here and there with how you play it whether it's on a tv screen or on an original game boy advance uh how about you what is what did your what was your takeaway for the visuals um yeah for the most part i had really good things uh i thought about it um yeah visually i thought they actually did a much better job than i expected the cut scenes look really cool uh, i was totally happy with those uh, i think they did some fun things with with even the in-game cut scenes where they like blow up the uh text size a lot in the dialogue and to emphasize you know uh big stressful things uh i think the character sprites uh for the most part look really good uh jack has a little bit of a weird issue and it's mostly because he's like a really strangely like his body proportions are really weird mm -hmm. and so he's got these super skinny legs and arms and so i think to make him not like a single pixel thin they had to kind of give him like a blue hue yeah. behind him mm -hmm. and so it looks a little weird but i understand why they had to do it because otherwise he just doesn't yeah i don't know he just yeah, he'd get lost really pretty off. easily yeah right and so you gotta kind of have to outline him a little bit and so um so there's that. Um, I think a lot of the level uh, designs, uh, backdrops, and everything are really cool. I mean, the first mm -hmm. level, like the background is yellow, uh, yeah. but then the sun is like a, a giant pumpkin with a you know a jack o' lantern face to it. So there's really cool things like that where um, maybe each level doesn't necessarily fit aesthetically but then later on as you move through a little bit i notice uh it gets a little bit darker and feels a little more because at some points it's a little too bright i feel like mm -hmm. uh, but there's some levels where there's like little skeleton guys hanging from the trees behind you and like moving so there's a nice good amount of depth to it where i feel like um you know compared to like a game boy game they, they were able to do a lot more with yeah. it um which I appreciated, and so uh, most of the time, the I think the art style, these like the backgrounds and the floors, it felt very Burton esque, where there was lots of like squigglies and and, yeah. and lines and things, and so I felt like it was really true to the source material, uh, and uh, you know, in that aspect or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, 
there's another uh, game mode that we'll talk about later um, that's kind of an alternate <laughs> thing, different from the rest of the game. And uh, I thought that was very visually impressive. I won't give away what that is just yet. And uh, and so I thought that was really cool, too, and, and kind of not uh, what you would expect. And uh, I don't even know if this is a visual thing, but the only thing i didn't like about well one of the things i didn't like about this game is the enemies and i think a lot of it is just maybe the subject matter and not so much the art style but basically the main bad guys of this game are bugs and right. uh it's just kind of lackluster um compared to you know like i don't know nightmare before christmas has all these really cool character designs and you know it's hard to come up with a bad guy when you know halloween town is pretty much full of bad guys Mm -hmm. uh more or less you know or the spooky guys i guess but um i don't know bugs i I get that it ties in with oogie boogie and stuff Mm -hmm. but it just i don't know it just didn't do it for me and and the designs they came up with just really didn't sell me on it so maybe if they'd gone a different route with the style of the you know the designs of the bugs maybe i would have liked it more but um off the top of my head, that's probably my biggest negative uh, visually. But I agree. Mm-hmm. I think it's by far one of the stronger points of this game are are the visuals. So, mm-hmm. um, anything else visually you want to you want to say before we move on? Uh, I just want to make sure I give mm-hmm. you a chance. No, I I think we pretty much summed it up. Uh, bring like just commenting on the point you made about the enemy type is, you know, it's if you break down the movie, and so this is a prequel. We'll get into that a little bit later, but. Even so, like, the universe doesn't really have any antagonists other than Oogie. You know, it's like most of the conflict is Jack versus himself. So right. um, it, it, that does make it hard to come up with something. You don't want to violate the existing universe by creating some sort of fake antagonist or whatever. So I, I get it. It's it was That's a tough choice um, to come up with anything outside of Oogie Boogie. And so to come up with the bugs, I get it. It's a trade-off. But it is unfortunate because yeah. there's not a whole lot of enemy variety. Um, um, also th- there's a couple other things I, I forgot, uh, just some small things. Uh, when you sit in a electric chair to, uh, get full health, uh, he, it does like this shocking animation thing. And I just thought that that was, was actually really cool. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, when you beat bosses, there's a kind of like a, I don't even know what you call it. I guess like a like win a mini animation. Cut scene. Yeah. Like Super yeah. Smash Brothers victory cutscene. Yeah. And it, it has some music from the, uh, for the movie and then he kind of does his little like i did it motion and uh i don't know i just thought that that was a really well done part too and when i saw that it kind of the first time it, it kind of made me smile because i was like oh that's actually really cool yeah and uh really well done so um i liked that mm-hmm. but there's a lot of little things like that in this game there are some nice little uh details and stuff and i think that they definitely paid attention to details Mm -hmm. you know certain levels you're uh walking past pumpkins and they're you know jack-o'-lanterns and they're uh they're glowing uh you know on the inside and stuff and Mm -hmm. um fireplaces and yeah there's some cool lighting lighting effects yeah Yeah. absolutely Uh, agree audio wise uh the only Mm. thing uh i i liked that they did use some of the music from the movie um I, I realized when I was playing this game that um, obviously Nightmare Before Christmas is a really special thing, the original movie and all that. And I think one of the reasons it works so well is because of the soundtrack. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so using some of that, even not just relying solely on it, um, I think was a good call on this one. Mm-hmm. Um, once you hit the, like the first level, though, all of a sudden you're like, ooh, I wish that would come back a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you experience that? Exactly that. Yeah, I love that it had it on the title screen and was a little sad that it wasn't for the rest of the game, um, especially because it's a musical. It's based on a musical. Um, right. Not unlike many of our other Disney games that we cover, but kind of the same problem we run into with the Capcom games where sometimes they'll sample it on the title screen and give you a tease and then it will kind of just, uh, you know, switch into the original compositions. Right. And so I don't know if it was level one or level two, but it was kind of getting annoying to me at one point. But then I think about the time that I I was like, all right, I'm kind of sick of this. I think I finally kind of moved on to the next part and the music changed up and I was like, okay, like, okay, that's good. I can breathe a little bit. But for a minute there, I was like, "Uh, I don't know about this. Yeah. And then I think it got a little bit better. So I don't know. I don't know if level one was their, you know, their best hit or whatever, but yeah. um, 
but every now and then the, the Danny Elfman stuff would come back mm-hmm. and uh, like the winning animation screen that I was telling you about when you beat a level like that comes back and I appreciate mm-hmm. that like oh good there's a little reference here and there um, right. and so I liked that I thought that was uh, that was good that they you know I understand they didn't use the original score for the whole game but they tried to use it when they could so um, props to them uh audio wise anything else you can think of yeah i mean the sound design in general is so again i didn't play a whole lot of game boy advance games so i'm not sure if this was super common or if this was uh that they spent their audio resources maybe on the music and the midi files i'm not sure what it is but a lot of the sound effects are like 8-bit waveform and and square wave and stuff like that saw wave and square wave like stuff you would hear on the nes um and then there's this really annoying sound every time you pick up uh, a fish skeleton, which is, is that the health? Or the oh ammo? yeah. But it, it sounds like one of, to me, it just instantly makes me think of one of the cuckoo clocks in Pinocchio, like in the movie. And I'm not right. sure it's really that, but it's kind of like this. Wah, wah. And it's, it's just awful <laughs> because it's yeah, so I'm like, common. I wasn't sure what, the, what they were going for. On yeah, that. I don't either. And it, it's, yeah. you know, we, we comment on this a lot where they just abuse sound effects for constant, uh, items or or things where it's like you know what this needs to either be subtle or non-existent because that's just it's obnoxious um another one that i didn't play with my wife around but i guarantee you she would have not been happy about that (laughs) so um yeah i'm listening to her right now it's like Mm -hmm. and you're like what you're picking up like uh fish bones Mm -hmm. why would the fish bones go yeah uh even even half Strange. of that, either the first half was just like, Whoop, or, you know, the last half, like, Whoop. yeah, like, I don't know. You could have cut it in half. You probably could have done much better than that. Even it just is excessive and annoying. Um, drove me crazy. So I agree. Um, but yes, a lot of the sound effects, like as you jump or pull yourself onto things are just very eight bit. Um, Thankfully it's the sound effects though and not the music. Right. Right. Yeah. And that's a good point. Cause the sound effects are, or the, the music is, at, you know, at least MIDI sampled, not unlike the later generation, like the Donkey Kong Country generation of Super Nintendo in that vein, rather right. than like the Super Mario World earlier ones that were still kind of, uh, I mean, that's a great soundtrack, but the instrumentation of it is pretty basic um, using right. basically what came stock, I think, with the sound chip on the Super Nintendo. I, I, I'm not super familiar with the hardware of the Game Boy Advance. It's kind of one of my blind spots with nintendo systems um i know it had two different processors and i i'd imagine there was different sound hardware and i'd heard stuff about like when they ported donkey kong country to the game boy advance that they ran into issues with the audio because it was not as good as the super nintendo which again was like 10 plus years older is like 11 years older than the game boy advance but mobile. right so anyway you know it's th- there was limitations in place and it, frankly the the sound design of the game is maybe one of the weaker points outside of uh what we'll talk about with the gameplay right speaking of the gameplay yeah um we can go ahead and hit on that um yes so as jeff mentioned earlier and me as well this is a metroidvania style game so it is not your typical linear level one go left to right and level two go left to right you know this is a uh one of those where you explore uh you make your way through areas you find new areas that you can't get to uh, until you acquire, you know, items or weapons or upgrades to access those areas, and so it, it works, you know, in that in that way. Um, which I mean, if you're into that, that's great. I know a lot of people love Metroid games, and uh, I just I, I don't know. I struggle. It, it frustrates me a little bit, mm-hmm. um, and and so I don't know. That we can talk about it but basically you you go to like a boss you fight the boss once you beat the boss they give you an upgrade and then you kind of backtrack through the mm-hmm. game that you've already played through um to get to areas that you weren't able to access earlier and so depending on how good the game is it helps paint a picture of where you need to go and uh helps you understand that you can't reach certain areas um, there was a couple points in this game where I thought I could reach something and I couldn't, mm-hmm. uh, and it took me, you know, an agonizing amount of time to finally realize it. And so that, that got a little frustrating, but, um, 
There's also, uh, yeah, there's a lot of collectibles and things that you can collect in this game, uh, different weapons that you use as Jack Skellington. And so he doesn't just rely on normal attacks, but he is, you know, using different weapons. Um, I'm just trying to think overview broadwise. Obviously, there's a ton of enemies you have to fight and uh, you make your way through. And then there's, you know, different save points uh, as you work your way through. Um, One thing about the, the save design of the game is that it, it's kind of unfortunate for a mobile game. Like just playing it through, it's fine because it's very similar to the old Metroid games where you literally you find a save station. This one, it's a scarecrow. But like for a Game Boy game that you have to go track those down and, and go return to them, there's no like quick save and resume later. Right. A um, little bit of a flaw there with mobile. And this is still in the earlier-ish days of good mobile design. Um. Personally, yeah, I don't mean, feel like that really came into its own until late DS and, and now on the Switch where you can kind of just do save states and, and save at any point because I feel like that's really important for Game Boy and mobile, di- mobile type games. Yeah, and I, I totally agree with you. Uh, I also think that it is nice in this instance where you can literally just shut the game off and turn it back on if you die or lose too much health and you're like, I'd rather just start at the save spot mm-hmm. and... Rather than working like worrying about it auto saving after you already lost say two or three, yeah, you know, um, health things or whatever. Um, so I I can see both sides of it, but I agree mm-hmm. it's 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 not great for a pick up and play for five minutes because you're probably right. not going to make enough progress to warrant you know or to even find a new save point at that point. So you'd have to backtrack back to the save right and save and. Uh, unfortunately after you kill enemies and then leave when you come back there's going to be new enemies there so yeah um that doesn't really i don't know help you too much so um jeff real quick would you mind going through the uh the weapons that this game has yeah so uh the first one you get and kind of your main one is the frog gun it's kind of like when sally gets the frog's breath into the stew in the movie she you know, like squeezes yeah. it and shoots out its breath. Um, basically, that you turn that into the main weapon, and so like, um, you use it and it shoots out a puff of green smoke, and that kills most enemies. Um, and then you can get an upgrade later by Doctor Finkelstein. So uh, later, you get the bat boomerang. Uh, and it basically sends out a burst of bats. Um, I didn't even get late enough in the game to use any of the later weapons. I just kind of had the frog gun. But uh, the next one is the pumpkin bomb, which is a grenade shaped like a pumpkin. uh, Powered up later on in the game by the clown. Probably, I would guess, a bigger blast radius or multiple. I'm not sure. (laughs) Um, I guess that's it for weapons. Yeah, um, not a ton. Uh, I like the the theme of them like i think mm-hmm. that like you mentioned they kind of feel like references to the movie so i think that's yeah. cool um but obviously not a ton of variety at least they didn't put uh, any kind of like ammunition on these yeah uh, <laughs> oh as far as i can remember is you just you have an infinite amount of of the things uh i know the frog gun had a really a larger blast radius i think it was actually even uh, did more damage than the bat boomerang did i think the bat boomerang it goes further but it's a little bit weaker and so um okay. it, i feel like they kind of did that intentionally obviously so you would have to cycle through your weapons and use different things depending on you know if you want to reach out and kill something or if you want to get up real close to it and do more damage and so i think they kind of tried to make them unique in their own way which was was cool um uh, so following that, um, you also have different collectibles, uh, things that you can find and pick up, um, the fish, the first one being the fish bones that we talked about earlier, which basically give you health. Um, then throughout the game will be, you'll find these hidden shrunken heads that you can use that affect your health. Now this part is kind of confusing and a little bit interesting because basically when you start the game, you have a health meter and then you see a little shrunken head and a number zero sitting right next to the head. So basically you mm-hmm. start with one bar of health and that's it. And so if you die, you game over and you have to load up your game. And if you haven't saved yet, then you start over. Um, so I thought it was weird. I'm like, why are they starting you with zero health? I thought that was stupid. Come to find <laughs> out it's, 
you don't even have lives you just have bars of health and so the 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 number at the bottom actually represents how many bars of health you have and so as as you find these heads you gain additional bars of health so it's nice in the fact that if you go through that whole thing of health you don't die and start the life over Mm -hmm. it it'll fully fill your bar again but if you go through all those then then you die so that's a straight up metroid (laughs) ripoff Is that a Metroid thing? Yeah. See, so my first ever Metroidvania, and really the only ones I've played are the Prime series on GameCube and Wii. And that's exactly how the health system works. You start with kind of one tank, and then you kind of increase your tanks. And um, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, tanks. It's, it's the exact yeah. same thing. Right. And so, I don't know. Uh, another great example, uh, or a prime example, uh-huh. of... <laughs> Of them just ripping, you know, Metroid off, but whatever. Yeah. Um, anyway, um, also there is the electric chair, which I mentioned earlier, which fills your health back up. I assume that only fills up your current bar. I don't think it, you know, gives you additional. And then the scarecrow, as Jeff mentioned, is the save point of the game. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So you look out for those. There's also some uh, additional, I think the uh, pumpkin bombs, I think you have to. I think there's a a finite, excuse me, excuse me, amount of ammo for those, and so you have to fill those back up. And then there's also um, little peppers or something for the uh, pumpkin king, uh, basically fireball upgrade. mode. <laughs> yeah, where you fly around and you break through walls and and fly basically. So yeah, um, yeah. So that's one thing. Um, is that you there's that uh there's also a part in the game where you eventually find your dog zero and then uh i only notice it at or played it at the beginning of the game but basically there's certain parts where you get to play as zero which is kind of cool um and so basically you uh the game mode completely changed up at that point and so at one point in the game i was locked in uh jack's house i couldn't get out and i was like zero i need your help help get out of the house and so he basically like flies through the chimney uh and so it changes the perspective completely and uh i don't know jeff maybe you know the lingo to explain what yeah this is it's, exactly it's like a pseudo 3d somewhat mode seven kind of like uh looks like the 3d rendering of like f-zero or mario kart with sprite scaling to have the items that are coming at you essentially you're going through a chamber and it's presented in like a over the shoulder pseudo 3d um in this one it's up a chimney and other ones it's like through an underground tunnel avoiding roots but it's pretty much the same thing just avoid stuff um collect fish bones i think and then that's pretty yeah much it, like it keeps like your a little up. bonus mini game but not really but yeah, yeah, but you still have to like get through to yeah it's um, to get to continue area. yeah yeah right exactly. and so I noticed that the the damage was a little harsh on that mm-hmm. uh, every now and then I would run into one and like lose a ton of health but then the fishbone health was a plenty at certain points so uh, it wasn't too bad um, but yeah so I, that was the part I was talking about earlier uh, I just thought it was a a nice change up uh, I wish there was some more of this stuff and and. I don't know, maybe there is, because I, I didn't get all the way through, <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know. I, it, it, it's a little choppy, and probably you know a kid who played it nowadays would be like, that's garbage, but yeah. I still think it's kind of cool for, for what it is. It's something different. Uh, it, it reminds me of those uh, old um, computer um, screensavers where you like... Oh, like the maze? Right, the maze. That, yeah. That's kind of the vibe similar, I Yeah, it's similar to like Doom and Wolfenstein, the very Doom, first yeah. ones. Like it's right. just that pseudo 3D, but with 2D assets. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But so kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Um, then the other thing that this game offers is a there are three mini games that you can play. So if you've been playing, you know, your Metroidvania for long and you're like, oh, I can't stand this anymore. Uh, this gameplay is so frustrating and I hate backtracking and fighting bad guys I've killed a million times. You can take a break and you can play some uh, uh, less than quality mini games, um, <laughs> yeah. which you have to unlock 
they aren't just you know available but once you unlock them they're on the main screen basically um but there's three of them they're called bone breaker whack hammer and skull duggery mm-hmm. now now jeff would you please be so kind as to explain to the listeners at home a little bit about these mini games yeah um they're pretty basic it looks like they can be played over link cable and they they kind of show like four player icons so i think that they can be but by default you play the cpu um so bone breaker is they're i mean they're all very simplistic so this one is um it looks like an old torture device where you like kind of crank to squash stuff but this one it's hit left and right as fast as you can to get your squasher to squash a uh, skeleton to break the bones um yeah whack hammer uh when we were talking about this in preparation i kind of likened it to a mini game that's in the movie wreck it ralph uh, when Vanellope's making her cars and he has to sort like ingredients, good ingredients from bad ingredients. This one's basically, you have things scrolling across the bottom of the screen and you've got two hammers, one with a bat, one with a mouse, and you just have to hit the corresponding uh, button to the hammer in time with when the item crosses like the whack point, <laughs> which it's not the official term, but uh, it's called whack, whack hammer. Whack point. Yeah. yeah, why not? Coin that video game phrase right there. Uh, so, yeah, basically just it's combination of timing and mostly it's recognition of the correct icon slash item. And then the last one, the Skullduggery, is kind of a um, ball under a cup memory game. It's like little presents and remembering what's in what, and they switch around, and you pick which one had the item in it. And so, um, yeah, that's that's the three mini games. All right. <laughs> Yeah. Um, one thing I meant uh, I forgot to mention: these can be played in single player or in multiplayer mode, uh, which can okay. be used by using the Game Boy Advance uh, system uh, link cable or whatever. Well, there we um, go. Nicely, you only need to have one copy of the game to do it, which I, I can appreciate. Yep. Um, but yeah, these games are super lame, and <laughs> even with friends, would probably not be much fun. You should just go play. Uh, yeah Mario party at that point it's true um yeah so i don't know it was cool they tried to come up with something but it kind of felt more like an afterthought or it seems like an afterthought i guess um yeah. so not really anything to write home about um one other thing i wanted to mention i started playing this game and it, i guess maybe it came with the fact that i was still wrapping my head around the fact that it was a metroidvania but uh i played a lot of the game before i realized oh i should probably look for my map because this <laughs> game has to have a map yeah and so i finally hit select to bring it up and that was when i was finally like, okay thank goodness there's a map in this game yeah um which any game like this really needs one. Um, I don't know. It, I guess it's an okay map. Um, I feel like it's relatively, you know, it shows you where scarecrows and electric chairs are. And so, and then it shows you where like doors are located. So yep. it helps. You it's need very, it. Very, very similar to a Metroid map. So, yeah. Okay. Um, other than that, I'm trying to think if there's anything else we're not hitting on um gameplay wise uh there's a couple uh special skills that you get later on in the game one of them is gum shoes where you can if you see a red colored sticky wall you can basically walk um you can walk on the walls and on the ceilings uh there's a stretchy ghost where jack can reach up to high places with the help of ghosts summon the ghost by hitting the call switch with a weapon uh and basically you can jump on the ghosts and then the last one is acid bath, which uh, walk Jack into an acid bath and he will melt into a blob. <laughs> uh, it's a little morbid, but yeah. cool, I guess. Works for um, him. Jack will then be able to slip into tight places. Then you press up on the control pad to reform him back to normal. So interesting. The creative um, uses of, of him. And I feel like they work within the realm of the, the series. Yeah. And what's presented in the movie. Like he pulls off his head in one song. So, I mean, it's not that far fetched totally. to have melt. So, totally um yeah so that's i guess the gameplay in a nutshell uh difficulty wise it's it's hard to say um just you know i I, obviously i got to the point where i was like i don't want to play this anymore i got frustrated Mm -hmm. um i don't know i think it's not necessarily it wasn't that i was like like the game was so difficult that i was frustrated with it it was more just the monotony of backtracking and fighting the same bad guys Mm -hmm. and trying to keep your health up 
between save points. Uh, looking at some of the later uh, gameplay footage, it does seem to get more difficult. I don't know, mm-hmm. Jeff, what did you think about the difficulty? Yeah, in general, I, I was kind of in the same boat as you where I got over it kind of quickly. But I think my biggest complaint is like when you're shooting, you're locked into the animation and like while jumping, you can't do it. And I, I feel like if they just added a little more mobility while shooting and killing, um, it would have worked a little bit better. Um, why they didn't is beyond me because other games in this genre tend to allow that and uh, make it a little more fluid and a little more uh, bearable. So it's it's a little annoying to me. It's like you can either jump and shoot at you know a point in your jump and that's it, or you can be on the ground and shoot. But like it sort of like locks you for that split second and it just doesn't feel good from a gameplay perspective. Yeah. Um, and then that kind of just ruins the rest of it for me because it's it slows it down tremendously after enough you know enemies respawning and all that. And like if you go back backtracking, I get that you don't want to keep them all dead, but maybe doing it timer based rather than screen based, if that makes sense. Where yeah, you know, have them be dead for five minutes and then eventually they respawn. Um, rather than if you go off screen and come back, they'll all be back, and that's super right. annoying. Totally. Um, the few bosses that I did play, I felt were pretty fairly, um, difficult. I don't know. I I felt like the the first boss wasn't too hard. And then the next one was, you know, a little bit more. And, um, eh, now thinking about it, it was actually kind of difficult because half (laughs) of the boss just took place off screen and, um, it was a little frustrating, but, um, I don't know. I think I think Jack um, controls well. I think that uh, for the most part, he did everything that I would want him to do as far as like a platformer game would go. Um, you know, you can grab on to ledge uh, grab. Is ledge huge. grab. Yeah, yeah. they helps. definitely uh, designed the levels with that in mind, and so mm-hmm. you really got to have that. Um, so I mean, everything works fine. Like it controls fine. I feel like. All that, you know, you brought up a couple things. So, really, there's nothing that the game, I think, does badly, uh, poorly, as far as, you know, just the basics of the game. So, um, moving on, uh, the story. Uh, Not too much to it. As Jeff mentioned, this is a prequel. Um, Reading out of the manual here, it's, it's actually pretty brief and short and sweet uh in this video game prequel to tim burton's the nightmare before christmas a frustrated oogie boogie has failed to create a holiday of his own so he tries to take over halloween help jack defeat oogie boogie's vile uh oh this is so weird plot and saved (laughs) halloween town from being overrun by bugs um yeah it's really weird i feel like there should be a comma there because it says help jack defeat oogie boogie's vile period Plot and save Halloween Town from being overrun by bugs. But I feel like it should be help Jack defeat Oogie Boogie's vile plot and save Halloween Town from being overrun by bugs. Yeah, they're using it as a uh, noun rather than a, than an adjective. Yeah. So sure. like yeah, a vial of, word vial of blood, which is weird. Right. I don't really know what that reference is. So maybe it's just not well, uh, you know translated yeah, but yeah or maybe it is i don't know maybe i just don't know what i'm talking about um <laughs> yeah. yeah so overall it's uh th- i mean the story is pretty interwoven into this game uh compared to maybe some older games you know starting out uh you, you run into the mayor and you talk to different characters throughout lock lock shock and barrel are you know they show up in and out throughout the game and so there's good amounts of you know breaks where there's story elements involved you you rescue other characters uh or you run across other characters from halloween town and so uh i liked that i thought that was neat that it wasn't just like level 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 you know intro at the beginning and then you know an end scene or whatever mm-hmm. um i did think the uh the the final cut scene at the end of the game is a little lackluster but um that's usually how it goes i guess yeah uh, i feel like they get to the end of the game and they don't know what to do with it and so they're like, oh. yeah it's probably related to storage space and stuff like that yeah right and, and basically the mayor's like jack we don't have time for you to talk to sally we need to get ready for halloween and then i guess that's them kind of setting up the movie i don't know um so but overall the story i guess isn't terrible i think it's cool that they at least did a prequel or 
tried to call it you know a prequel instead yeah. of just being like this is a random thing that happens at some point somewhere um, yeah so <clears throat> other than that um trying to think there was something else i was going to mention about the gameplay and now i can't remember what it was um yeah there's there's numerous different bosses in this game uh i'll list a couple of them here mega spider a giant snake roly-poly um, a colossal moth, a zombie centipede, lock, shock, and barrel, uh, oogie. Then you get icky oogie or oogie icky. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I don't know. They're all pretty much bug themed, which I already kind of shared my thoughts on that. Yeah. Yep. yep. Um, but what are you going to do? So, um, uh, I'm trying to think if there was anything else to say that I mentioned, Jeff, did you have any other things before we we move into our, our final thoughts. No, I think at this point we've kind of covered the, the main gist of it, and I don't know if there's too much more that we could say without really just repeating what we've right. kind of we, said we so far. Do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into our final thoughts. Uh, Jeff, would you please start us off? Yeah, so, I mean, this game is oozing with visual presentation, and, and definitely you can tell the people who made it seem to be really big fans of the the IP and it shows in the, the, the look and feel of the presentation um, it falls a little bit flat as far as the overall game um, and it's weird because it's not like this game was rushed out to meet some sort of deadline or uh, anything like that it was you know it's how long did it come out after the original movie like 12 years and yeah. so <laughs> it's not like it was tied to match the movie release date or anything like that which often plagues licensed games but um it's kind of like a Metroidvania light in that it doesn't quite have the depth or innovation of a new entry in either Castlevania or Metroid uh, or anything similar. And, you know, it's not, it's cool to have the license tie in and all that and the visuals, but it doesn't hold enough gameplay wise or, or anything to really warrant a recommendation for me. So like it's visually, it's pleasing. It's got some decent music tracks here and there, and then some not so decent ones. Um, overall, it's like, it's a game that wants to be good, but it's just not quite good enough. Um, and yeah. I'm with you. I don't really love Metroidvania games that much. Like the Prime series is my one exception to that personally. So um, okay. that's pretty much it. I, I would recommend if you like the franchise, check it out if you have the if you have the ability to the you know the means to. But otherwise, wouldn't say it's a must play. Okay. Yeah, I guess my big thing with with Metroidvania is they always feel super long, and I I don't feel like I don't know. I just don't if, feel like the the changes up where they change things up. I don't feel like it's drastic enough, which yeah. is weird because I love platformers. So to say something like, I don't know, it's like it. it, it I feel like it outstays its welcome. I feel like it handles. Um, it, it depends how they handle the backtracking mechanism because that's a core to it. You have one giant game world, and sometimes you have to backtrack. And it's if those are handled well, it works. And if they aren't, it just drags it out. Yeah, and it just doesn't feel like you're making a ton of progress. I guess mm -hmm. I don't yeah. know. Um, I guess, yeah. So final thoughts, uh, I went into this really excited, left a little bit frustrated. Um, there's a couple points in the game where like it, there's arrows point, go this way. <laughs> and so I spend all this time going that way. And then I collect a shoe, which is, you know, uh, there's like different clothing from like Sally and different characters that you collect. They're like side items, which we didn't mention, but uh, you spend all this time going through this really frustrating area just to grab a shoe. And then it's like for something later in the game that yeah. really doesn't even affect the main gameplay. I don't know. Stuff like mm. that frustrates me. And it was like, at that point I just wanted to die and like not <laughs> have to retrace my steps. Yeah. And, and so I don't know. Stuff like that was a little frustrating. Mm. Uh, I think if you're a fan of, you know, Tim Burton or Nightmare, before Christmas, I think you should definitely check this out. I feel like it's a re relatively uh, good, um, you know, if you're looking for something where you're like, oh, I want to spend more time in Nightmare Before Christmas world, like, yeah, you could totally pick this up and 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 get some fun out of it that way. Yeah. Um. So if you're a fan of the series or or, or you know the movies and stuff, I would say definitely go for it. Totally. Um. If you're a fan of Metroidvanias, then I would say definitely check this. At out. least check it out. Yeah um but yeah other than that i agree visually it's a good looking game uh aud audibly at times it works well and then sometimes it doesn't um 
so yeah unfortunately i i wasn't as thrilled i was totally like ready to like put in lots of hours if i needed to to beat the whole game and then very quickly i realized like this isn't this was not made for me and i try to not completely be completely biased just based on the fact that i'm not a fan of the genre um mm-hmm. in fact i've reviewed a lot of games outside of the show that are metroidvanias and uh so i don't know i feel like I, i've played enough of them to know when they're when they're at least you know half decent and when they're good and mm-hmm. so i i don't know if this one really stacks up to the rest i'm not a big metroid guy so I, it's hard for me to compare completely but i have played metroid games and so i, ha- I have a yeah. decent idea but yeah uh unless you're really into the the subject matter i would i would say stay away unfortunately i feel bad i hate talking negatively about this game because i love nightmare so much but Mm -hmm. uh just not exactly what i was looking for maybe next year we'll uh we'll check out the xbox one and uh see what we think maybe that one will be better yeah so all right guys well that is it for this week's episode uh we hope that you guys have a great halloween uh hopefully you can watch some nightmare and uh maybe some other tim burton disney uh halloween movies um Mm -hmm. If you haven't already, check us out on Twitter. Uh, we are at, at under or at mouse underscore bites. Uh, we're on there. We every time we post a new episode, that's the first place we let people know that you can find our new episodes. You can also go to our website, thenintendovillage.com, uh, where you can find a list of all of our episodes as well as some other great shows. They also do reviews for Switch games and some other cool stuff. So check that out. Um, You can also go to our YouTube page where you can just search Nintendo Village where we post uh, basically gameplay. So you can see me uh, crapping my way through Nightmare Before Christmas (laughs) um, and playing terribly. But if you like to watch gameplay while you listen, you can definitely check that out. Guys, join us next week. We are playing and reviewing one of the pinnacle games to ever come out. Uh, One of the I don't know, most notorious, most, uh, in my opinion, one of my favorite uh, video games that has to do with Disney, and that is Lion King. Woo-hoo. And uh, I am so excited. And uh, <laughs> just gonna, we've got a lot to say about this game. Uh, I'm probably going to have to uh, figure out a way to play through this game because I am not talented enough to play through it without Yeah, I might need to use a selector. <laughs> yeah. So, but I, I'm excited to talk about it. I have so much history with that game and so many good memories so i'm super stoked to talk about it so it'll be really good um yeah jeff well thanks so much for uh for making this happen have a good halloween sir you as well and don't forget this is halloween (laughs) see you later Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe, check out some of our other videos, and visit the NintendoVillage.com, your home for everything Nintendo.